Today, I'm riding this sleeper train for 97 hours across an entire continent. I'll show you exactly what it's like to live on board this train from economy to first class, from how you shower, the food you get, and what it's like to sleep on board. There's even separate viewing cars to enjoy one of the world's longest railway journeys, from mountains to cities to wilderness. Let's pick up my story at the beginning of this epic adventure in Toronto, Canada. Well, hello there and welcome back to the channel. You join me here bright and early at Toronto Union Station where we're going to be catching the Canadian. Super excited about this, although a little daunted as we're going across an entire continent. Opened in 1927, Toronto Union Station is a landmark in its own right. It's Canada's largest and most opulent railway station, designed in a boussois style back in 1913. It's certainly stood the test of time and is a fitting space to start our epic journey. We're in prestige class today, so instead of checking in at the counter, we're directed to the business class lounge, adjacent to the main ticketing hall. After a warm Canadian greeting, our bags are checked, tickets validated, and we're shown into the lounge. Naturally, let's begin with a caffeine hit. It's still early after all. With coffee in hand, let me show you the special lounge within a lounge which prestige guests have access to. In fact, this section is entirely for us as there are no other guests in first class. In what seems like no time at all, we're welcome to board at our leisure. Our friendly concierge, Natalie, escorts us through the station to our platform. Here we are then, our train, the world famous Via Rail Canadian, our home for the next 97 hours. With its pedigree dating back to the first transcontinental passenger trains of 1886, this is a service rooted in history. It wasn't however until the 1950s that a new luxury offering came to light, known as the Canadian. What makes this so special is the train still operates the original 1950s Bud stainless steel cars. Oh, and it also appears on the Canadian $10 bill. Our first class prestige carriage is located to the rear of the train in car 130. There are six ensuite bedrooms per carriage and we're in room D today, right in the centre. This is my preference for a smoother journey. Well, welcome on board and yet again, welcome back to the channel, Millie. Hi. You're, you're about to say you're back. <laughs> I think that's your catchphrase, I'm isn't it? Back. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, welcome to our room, our prestige class room, where it's home for the next five days. Let's get settled in, we're going to set off and we'll show you all around. After a few minutes, we're notified it's time for departure, and so begins the constant movement for the foreseeable future. So where is the world's second longest passenger train taking us? We'll cross the northern Ontario lakelands, the wide open prairies of Manitoba and Saskatchewan, before passing the Alberta and British Columbian Rockies, finally arriving into Vancouver on day five. As we trundle slowly out of Toronto, we're treated to epic views of the CN Tower. It's actually more relevant than you'd think as the CN Tower was commissioned by the Canadian National Railway Company back in 1973. Anyway, back to our prestige compartment. We're offered champagne and canapes to begin with. This certainly is a far cry from Amtrak. With that, let's take a proper look around our room. This is the very best class of travel within the Via Rail network and offered exclusively on the Canadian, with a huge panoramic window and a comfy leather adorned L-shaped couch for use in the day, and this will convert to a comfortable double bed by night. There's even a TV loaded with a variety of movies and TV shows. There's a mini bar which can be stocked with drinks of your choosing, replenished throughout your journey. There are several power outlets which will keep your devices charged, with AC being controlled via a central control panel. You're also able to call your concierge at any time, anything from room service to turn down. It's a smart space that's for sure, but it needs to be for this price point. There's also an ensuite bathroom, complete with shower and lelabu amenities, though we'll take a closer look at this later on. Anyhow, I make it time for lunch. Each meal is served in two sittings, and sometimes three join peak summer travel. In prestige, you get the first pick of timings, and we've gone for the later sitting today. 
Aside from room service, meals are all served in the dining carriage, which is located one car down the train. It's a lovely place to be with huge panoramic windows and seating arranged into play settings of four. That is aside from our separate booth to the rear, which has been reserved just for Millie and I. Shall we take a look at the menu then? An impressive four options for main is offered, along with soup of the day and a selection of desserts. In terms of drinks, these are chargeable to most passengers. However, prestige guests get these included. Naturally, let's begin proceedings with an ice cold DC as our orders are placed. It certainly started to get a lot busier in here. Remember, it's communal seating for most, so be prepared to make some new friends. Soup of the day turns out to be a tomato served with a Kellogg's cracker. I can't say I've been served such a combo before, but hey, it works really well. A few minutes later and we're served our main. Millie goes for the spinach and ricotta cannelloni, complete with a rich tomato sauce and garlic ciabatta. Meanwhile, I opt for the pulled pork sandwich. And as if this isn't enough, there's apple crumble and chocolate ice cream. Top marks all around, albeit I'm now rather full. Just as lunch concludes, we pass over the famous Parry Sound Trussell Bridge, completed in 1907 by the Canadian Pacific Railway. At 105 feet high, the trestle provides single track passage for westbound traffic, whilst eastbound uses Canadian national tracks. This also means that we've arrived at our first fresh air break. Better get wrapped up warmly, it's certainly well below zero outside currently. Parry Sound is a popular vacation destination, from hiking trails to the beautiful shores of Georgian Bay. However, today I'll just be attempting not to stack it on the incredibly icy platform. We've already travelled a few hundred kilometres, so um, we're now in quite different surrounds to Toronto, of course, but time to get some fresh air and uh, step onto some solid ground just briefly. Back on board, I think it's time we explore some more of the train, including the dome car, sleeper cabins, and the bullet lounge. Unfortunately, unlike the Royal Scotsman or Andean Explorer, there's no onboard spa facility on the Canadian sleeper train. However, in such instances, you can take the spa to you. Introducing the Swedish beauty tech brand, Foreo, the sponsor of today's video. Foreo actually have a wide range of innovative devices for home, such as the UFO2 at home supercharged facial device that practically gives you a spa facial in just two minutes. It's the perfect gift for your significant other, but let me tell you a little more. The UFO2 features a bunch of tech that you can only get at a spa, such as thermotherapy, cryotherapy, and LED light therapy. It's app connected for true personalization, allowing you a professional level treatment from the comfort of your own home at a smaller cost is obsessed with the UFO 2 device and is constantly showing me how her skin is more radiant and softer. I have to admit I may have stolen this from her for uh, testing purposes. It's great as it works for every skin type so you can't make a mistake. It's the perfect gift or indeed an at-home spa treat for yourself. Thanks again Foreo for sponsoring today's video. Let's head to the Sleeper Plus car which features three types of accommodation. Firstly, the cheapest, upper and lower berths. By day, two double seats which face each other, but by night, the seat folds down to provide two comfortable beds with a privacy curtain. There are no ensuite facilities, but instead, a toilet is located at the end of the carriage. Now let's go up another class to the private cabin for one. These feature lockable doors, privacy curtains, and an all-important ensuite. Well, not quite. With this being your toilet, no thank you. I'd instead opt for the toilet at the end of the carriage again. Both of these accommodations offer access to a shared shower facility. Lastly, the private cabin for two. Unfortunately, I'm unable to access these on my trip because they're fully booked, but here's some stock footage so you get a rough idea. Back in our cabin, dusk begins to fall, whilst we're served a pre-dinner charcuterie board, which is certainly a lovely surprise. Okay, it's that time again. We're at the second sitting for dinner too, but remain at the same booth to the rear of the dining car. This evening's menu looks particularly special, and I'm sure you can guess what I'm going to be going for. Our drinks are served and orders taken, and in no time at all we're served an appetizer of salmon roe and creme fraiche on bellinis with a side salad of balsamic dressing. Not quite beluga caviar, but most tasty. 
as we drift through the darkness of Ontario, we're served a delicious pretzel roll along with our mains. We both opt for the steak, however not being a huge mushroom fan, having mine without the sauce. It's cooked to my liking of medium rare, top marks. To finish, we're served a rich, decadent chocolate brownie cake, which is utterly divine. With our tummies full, let's head back to our cabin for some sleep. It's worth noting that our room is accessible by hotel-style keycards, unlike the rest of the train, which just lock from the inside. So our room has been transformed into some very comfortable sleeping quarters. Even down to some Belgium chocolate being placed next to our pillow. All in the detail, eh? It's time to boot the Tims off and get ready for some sleep. It's been a long day of eating and exploring, with much more to undertake tomorrow. The next day. We awake to a stunning winter wonderland, still in fact in the state of Ontario. I make it time for a shower, which is always somewhat a challenge when you're moving at 70 miles an hour. Believe it or not, I'm actually a little peckish. Let's head to the dining car to remedy that. Can you tell it's a little cold out? You can almost build a snowman in the vestibule. Time to warm up with a piping hot caffeine hit, and of course, a hearty brekkie. I opt for the transcontinental breakfast, consisting of scrambled eggs, hash browns, and bacon. We're about to arrive into our first stop of the day, Sioux Lookout, so let's grab my jacket and head outside. <laughs> As Millie says, it's incredibly cold here, a bitter minus 25 Celsius. To warm up, let's yomp it up the front of the train and take a look at our locomotive, taking us all the way to British Columbia. We're in fact being pulled by two General Electric P42 DCs with a combined 8,500 horsepower. That should certainly do the trick. Anyway, back to Sioux Lookout, known by locals as Hub of the North. Its name originates from the nearby mountains used to watch for Sioux warriors. Incorporated in 1912 as a terminal on the National Transcontinental Railway. Today the town is a busy hub for healthcare and education for the northern communities, but swells in size during the summer months with many seasonal visitors. Welcome to, uh, well, it's a quite a small town, although for the area it's a big town, of a population of around 5,000 people. We're just going to have a quick look around because it's freezing, isn't it? So cold. Utterly freezing, about minus uh. 20 here. Also comment on how much more prepared Millie is than I. <laughs> I've got very basic gloves on, the coat's good, but uh, Millie is much more warm than I am. With refuelling done, it's time to get back on board and not wanting to risk being left without another train west for quite some time. As we glide through the winter wonderland outside, I think it's time for a better perspective. Of course, it's time to explore this train's party piece, the park car. No other vantage point compares for a close-up look at the fabulous panorama that is Canada. Located at the very end of the train, here it is. During peak times, access here is limited to just prestige guests, so it's almost like a private lounge. However, during the winter months, it's open to everyone on board. Snacks are available throughout the day with comp drinks for us. Though being perpetually jet-lagged, I think we'll stick with the caffeinated variety. Let's head upstairs to my favorite part of the train, the Park Dome. Seats are a 2-2 config with arguably the best views being up front. These are reserved for exclusive use by the prestige class passengers. We're incredibly fortunate to be such passengers today, so let's settle in next to Millie and enjoy a fresh coffee. That is, of course, if the snow clears just a bit. We'll shortly be arriving into Winnipeg, the provincial capital of Manitoba. This will be a prolonged stop of around four hours, so plenty of time to get out and stretch our legs. 
It seems strange to be back in a large built up area after spending the last 36 hours in the wilderness coupled with little cell reception. Not wanting to walk too far away, we'll head off into the station and check out the immediate area around downtown Winnipeg. This station is also the gateway to Churchill. This is certainly a train I'd love to take at some point. Over 45 hours on board and it will take you to what's known as the Beluga Whale and Polar Bear Paradise. It's also a great place to see the Northern Lights. Let me know if you'd like to see a video on this later in the year. Well, it's a very good evening here from Winnipeg Station. We're actually, I think, pretty much in downtown as well. So we've actually got a bit of time to go and explore the city. I've never been here before. Do you know anything about where we are? I don't, know. No? Okay, well, let's try and find out together just a little bit. We've got about an hour and a half before we need to get back on the train. And of course, we do not want to miss the train because if we do, there's none of, well, we won't be going to Vancouver. We'll be stuck in Winnipeg and all of our luggage will be going to Vancouver. So uh, yeah, let's not do that. The city is named after the nearby Lake Winnipeg. Though perhaps one of the most unique quirks of the city is the world's largest ice rink. Well, kind of. Technically, the world's longest naturally frozen skating trail at a length of five and a half miles. To be frank, it feels like we're ice skating walking around downtown. It's so incredibly slippy. So much so after seeing the iconic Fort Garry Hotel, which was built by the Grand Trunk Pacific Railway in 1913, we decide it's probably best to head back to the warmth of the train and indeed dinner. Back on board, let's head straight to the dining car. As usual, the menu looks brilliant. To begin, Millie opts for the seared prawns with a sweet chilli sauce, whilst I go for the winter vegetable soup. Something about it just feels particularly warming this evening. This is served with some delicious freshly baked pretzel bread. For main, I go for the garden vegetable lasagna with a breadcrumb topping. It certainly hits the spot. Now, I probably shouldn't have, but hey, for review purposes, let's try the salted caramel cheesecake. Rich, moist, and utterly delicious. Just as I put my fork down, we begin to roll out of Winnipeg Station. So let's head back to our living quarters and turn in. We'll see you all in the morning. The next day. Good morning from yet another new province, Saskatchewan. Through the night we went through the rest of Manitoba, which also means we've gained yet another hour. Just as we finish off the last of our coffee, we begin to glide into our first stop of the day, Saskatoon. Unfortunately, the railway is five miles outside the CBD, so there's not a chance to explore the downtown area. Originally, Saskatoon's main station was located closer to the city centre, opened in 1908 by a Canadian Pacific. However, passenger service ended here in 1960, where it was relocated to the current station. Well, hello and good morning from, where are we, Millie? Saskatoon. We are, and well, we're here for, I think it's, is it 20 minutes or so? Yeah, but I am eager to get back though soon. Yeah, Millie's not quite used to my uh, how much I like to push it and how far I get away from the tracks. Your anxiety levels are at peak. I like to stay close to the train. <laughs> no, I don't blame you. I mean, given what I've been capable of doing before, if long-time viewers of the channel will know my uh, how I almost missed a train in the wilderness of Alaska where there wasn't a train for another two days. We don't want to do that. No. Let's make sure we don't do that. Much to Millie's relief, we'll head back to the platform where refuelling has almost finished and get back on board. I think it's time we explore some more of the train. Believe it or not, there's still a few carriages that we've not seen yet. We'll start with the Skyline car located near to the front. This is accessible to both sleeper and economy passengers with this comfy lounge to relax in and watch the world go by. This is also where the catering provision is for economy, but also on demand for sleeper passengers. There's also a less glamorous dining room to eat in, I believe it's referred to as the Skyline Cafe. But the real special feature of this car is yet another dome upstairs.
There is no reserved seating up here, but I never found seating to be of an issue. Of course, in the more popular areas like the Rockies we'll be passing through tomorrow, you'll want to get here early doors. During summer months, this would be the only option for non-prestige guests throughout most of the day. However, they do add additional dome cars, especially for the increased passenger footfall. Now, I mentioned economy. This is located one car up, which again can flex for capacity. Today, there's just one of these cars on the train, but more are added during peak season travel. I can't say I'd like to do five days here though. With the sun getting lower in the sky, remember it's winter still, so it sets pretty early. Let's go and enjoy the views from the prestige seating in the park car. Oh, and so that we can enjoy drinks served at our seats too. As night has fallen, it's of course dinner time in the restaurant car, and what a treat we have this evening. To start, I opt for the butternut squash soup, but it's the main event I'm most looking forward to. The prime rib of beef, of course, complemented by a rich rosemary demi-glaze, phenomenal. To close, we both go for the famous chocolate brownie cake. This has got to be one of my favorite desserts on board a train to date, top marks via rail. And with that, it's time to turn in for the night because tomorrow we'll be in the Rocky Mountains. The next day. Good morning from Jasper, Alberta, yet another new province after we've traveled through the night from Saskatchewan. Unlike the provinces we've passed through so far with indigenous derived names, Alberta was named after Queen Victoria's fourth daughter, Princess Alberta, in 1905. Jasper for me marks one of the highlights of the trip, as we'll be continuing through the Rocky Mountains today. Jasper is an all-season playground, from skiing during the winter months, through cross-country trails, hiking and rafting during the summer. It's also one of the terminus stations of the Rocky Mountaineer, a luxury train which I took last summer. Well, it's a beautiful good morning here from Jasper, Alberta. It's uh, it's around eight o'clock and we've got about an hour to explore off the train. This town is somewhere I want to be for much longer. It's of course also our first uh, look at the Rocky Mountains because last night when we were sleeping, we went through much of the Rockies, but we do have some incredible views coming up this morning. It's at this point we're distracted by this cute coffee shop and the baked goods it has to offer. I mean, we have to warm up, right? Appropriately caffeinated, it's time to reboard the train. Jasper is a popular boarding point for many passengers who just want to overnight to Vancouver and enjoy some of the most incredible scenery the Canadian has to offer. This next leg of the journey will take around 24 hours, reaching our final destination of Vancouver early tomorrow morning. This is where prestige class really comes in clutch, having upfront reserved seating for the most scenic part of the trip. And my word, within just a few minutes of leaving Jasper, it's evident why the Rocky Mountaineer exclusively runs a train for this sector. I have to admit, this is one of the most magical train experiences I've had to date, gliding through one of the world's most iconic mountain ranges, or whilst kicking back in a comfy recliner, sipping coffee in the warmth. But that's not all, as we continue even higher, we wind through forests under heavy snow. It's really just a dream at this point. We have a brief interlude where the train passes through the Rocky Mountain Trench between the Rockies and three mountain ranges, the Caribou, Monashi and Selkirk Ranges. This is known as the Valley of the Mountains or, well formerly, Valmont, but also signifies our entry into our final province of British Columbia. Given it's past midday now, I think we should indulge in a spot of brunch. This is served in the dining car, and given we've been up since about 6am, I'm definitely feeling more lunch than breakfast. So pasta is on the agenda. 
Pasta of the day is a delicious four cheese ravioli served with fresh garlic bread. It most definitely hits the spot, however the resulting food coma means an afternoon nap is most certainly needed. This of course highlights the benefit of having turn down service whenever you want. I'd say sitting back in our comfy bed, being gently rocked by the motion of the moving train and looking out of the panoramic windows is the most relaxed I've been in a very long time. Awake and rejuvenated, we're about to arrive into Kamloops. Incorporated in 1893 as a result of the gold rush and the construction of the Canadian Pacific Railway, it saw this once small settlement thrive to tens of thousands. It's an important transportation hub, but also a tourist hotspot. It's actually one of Canada's sunniest destinations, with many resorts popping up to cater for both domestic and international visitors. Well, welcome to Kamloops North. We're around a 20 minute drive outside of Kamloops. In fact, I was here before when I took the Rocky Mountaineer from Banff to Vancouver. This was the mid stopover point. And in fact, you probably just saw in the corner of the shots just now, the Rocky Mountaineer, which is uh, basically in hibernation mode until the summer months. This will be our last stop off the train before we arrive into Vancouver in the morning, though we still have one last car to experience beforehand, the Bullet Lounge. It's actually part of the parked car at the rear of the train, and it's one of the busiest on board, which we rarely found empty. However, with the first dinner seating currently underway, this allows us some respite. We can enjoy the inclusive alcoholic and soft drinks here, and what a way to end another incredible day on the rails. It's time for our last dinner on board and starting with a delicious appetizer of chorizo served with a Dijon mustard dressing. For main, Millie went for the rack of lamb, whilst I went for the chickpea curry served with fresh roti. Ordinarily, I'd have chosen the lamb too, but fancy something a little different this evening. Something which we both didn't fancy a change from though is the chocolate brownie cake back on the menu by popular demand. Seriously, I need to find the recipe for this one. The next day. Well, good morning and welcome to our very last mile heading into Vancouver. By this point, you've probably wondered just how much this all cost. Well, it was far from cheap. For five days in prestige class, for the two of us came to 11,257 Canadian dollars. Now, the service was flawless, the food was incredible, and it was a very comfortable way of crossing the country. However, it's still a crazy amount of money. And whilst I absolutely loved it, this is Orient Express level of cost. If I was to do this again, I'd probably go for the sleeper plus cabin for two at over half the price. Well, we are happy to announce that we have arrived safely in Vancouver after five days on the rail all the way from Toronto. Millie, how has your experience been on the Canadian? Oh, it's been absolutely amazing. The staff were lovely. The food was amazing. Oh my God, the food. <laughs> I feel like I don't need to eat for days. <laughs> yeah, we pretty much had to get rolled off that. But, um, <laughs> but we had an amazing time. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll catch you all again next time.